Since the last time we saw this telescope, there's been a few modifications and upgrades since then. We've added an AstroZap light shroud to block stray light, and just in case we drop anything, it won't hit the primary mirror. We've also replaced the stock Skywatcher focuser clamp with a compression ring adapter that you can find in the description below sold by First Light Optics. Let's get this telescope aligned and ready for tonight's planetary capturing. Wow, I am excited for tonight. I have always wanted high resolution photos of the planets. Ever since I was a child, I have dreamed of seeing and capturing the planets up close. And tonight is finally the night. I've waited quite literally around 27 years for this dream to come true. And tonight it's finally here. We're going to be using the new 14 inch Dobsonian telescope to capture these photos, along with a rather unorthodox camera setup as you're going to see. It's been very wet here with lots of rain in the last few days, but we finally got some clear skies to come. I am so excited. My first night out with this telescope was truly amazing. And I'm so excited to get out with this telescope again tonight and hopefully the next two nights. So the aim is to capture Jupiter, Saturn and Mars maybe even Neptune. I have never captured Neptune before and have only photographed Mars once. And that was last week with this telescope. None of my camera setups are quite optimal for this telescope. I have the ZW0715MC, which is designed for fast Newtonians without a Barlow. And I have my ZW0533s. They've got much bigger pixels and they are better for potentially this telescope, but I need around a four times Barlow to get my optimal sampling. However, I don't have a four times Barlow, so I'm just gonna make it work with this setup as you're going to see. Yes, this is the setup I'm going to be using. It's the ZWA533MC with a whole lot of spaces, an ADC from ZWO, and a basic two times Barlow that you get with these kind of telescopes. This is not the best Barlow in the world, but we'll make what we have work. I've added extra spaces in order to increase the multiplication. Any spacing you have between the Barlow elements and the sensor increases magnification. On tele extenders, a bit like the PowerMates from Teleview, they don't do that. You don't get extra magnification, but optically, they're slightly better. So we're gonna see what we can get with this setup and hopefully make it work. It worked not too bad on my eight inch Newtonian there. So let's see how it works on the big 14 inch telescope right here. So I wait for the telescope to cool down a fair bit before I start collimation, just so things are a bit more happy and potentially more stable once it gets to taking photos or viewing anything through the telescope. I use a laser to collimate. This has always given me good results, but I do do a star check um, on the collimation once I'm up and running. That way I can be much more happy with the accuracy of the laser collimation. I've used lasers on everything down to an F3.45 Newtonian and it's always given me good results. The main thing is making sure your collimator is also collimated and a star test will always reveal any issues you have with your collimation. The telescope was collimated, star aligned, and it was ready to now point at Saturn. I was so anxious and excited to see how the result would come out. I took a view through the eyepiece and was amazed. Seeing Saturn through a big telescope is something everyone needs to see in their lifetime. connected my camera and got ready to photograph Saturn. So it's a few minutes before midnight 
The sky is mostly clear, but there is some cloud over Saturn right now. I'm just capturing my first videos at around 116 frames a second, which I'm really happy about because I'm using a deep sky camera to do this. I can't wait to see the final photo. And this setup is looking really, really good. I never, I never ever thought I would get the photos of the planets like I'm getting tonight. I'm quite tired, but when you're having a good evening, it's always worth staying up for. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning with hopefully a photo of Saturn. Catch you in the morning. But that was a great evening. While the conditions weren't amazing and I had to pack up due to a rain forecast, we had some amazing sights. I managed to capture Saturn and Jupiter with my astro camera setup. I put my phone against the eyepiece and I captured Messier 13, the Ring Nebula, Andromeda, the Dumbbell Nebula, and amazingly, Stefan's Quintet and NGC 7331. Those two targets I never thought I'd be able to capture with a phone. Despite having to pack up early due to rain being forecast, it's always great to be under a clear sky. The scene conditions to capture the planets wasn't great. I probably over magnified my setup. When you have a big aperture, it's always tempting to really want to push the limits that it's capable of, but sometimes the sky just really isn't there to do so. However, we've got another clear night forecast tonight, so I'm going to uncover the telescope and get ready to try all over again. This time I'm going to take my time with Saturn and see if I can get a clearer, sharper image tonight. I'll be honest, last night felt really cold. I was outside for about four hours, and while the temperatures weren't that low, they hit about seven degrees Celsius. It's more than moisture in the air that really made me cold to the bone. Hopefully tonight is a little bit warmer and a little bit drier, but we'll see. The forecasts aren't in my favor. So welcome to night two. We've got the Newtonian set up on the EQ6R Pro. So we're gonna be carrying on with our project we started last night. And of course, we've got the big 14 inch dog as we're all familiar with now hopefully carry on trying to capture our best ever photo of Saturn. Currently just having a look at Messier 13 looks incredible. Seriously, the fact you can resolve so many stars just always amazes me. Now I understand what Aperture Envy is. When you see stuff through a big telescope, it will change your life. Anyway, let's get going to start our imaging session. We'll set off the Newtonian here, carry on with our targets. Then we'll carry on with the Dobsonium. Catch you in a bit. It's night two and is much of the same as the first night. We're pointing the telescope at Saturn in hope to capture a clearer image than the first night. Seeing conditions initially seemed a lot better, so we'll have to see how the image comes out. Stay tuned for the end of the video where I'll be showing all the photos I captured from the three nights of imaging. Last night was really great. The scene conditions were a lot better than the first night and I got to see some things in my eyes I have never seen before. And that's what astronomy is all about. Even if you've seen targets before, through a bigger telescope and under darker skies, you can reveal richer and better detail. As I was capturing Saturn, its rings appeared sharper and the scene conditions were better. So I'm really excited to stack that data and see how that image comes out. However, it's night three tonight, my last clear night, so I'm hoping tonight will be just as good and we can get an even better image of Saturn. Unfortunately, I had to cut last night short after imaging Saturn, but hopefully I can get on Jupiter and Mars tonight. I'm really excited what tonight brings and hopefully clear skies. So tonight I'm also going to be checking out the Wi-Fi that is built directly into these Dobsonian bases. Yes, you don't need an extra Wi-Fi dongle, Wi-Fi is built directly in. As soon as you turn the base on, 
it will emit its own Wi-Fi hotspot that you connect your phone to and control it using the SynScan app. So I'm hoping to have potentially a slightly more cozier, warmer experience tonight where I can potentially stay inside, control the base from my phone and do some remote planetary imaging. Now you might think, Ben, that's lazy. At the moment it's pretty cold here. It's gonna go down to two degrees Celsius tonight. I know some of the hardcore people are thinking that's not bad, but I was in hospital today. I'm fine, but there's something I'm not really willing to do tonight. But I am a bit drowsy for being sedated earlier. But hopefully that won't affect my astro session tonight and we can have some really good sky conditions again tonight and capture some clear, sharp images of the planets. So enough talking and let's get back to capturing and looking at the night sky. Wow, I've just put a two times Barlow in here with the 12 millimeter eyepiece looking at the ring nebula and it looks amazing. It's still so bright. I'm so used to Barlow's, of course, reducing the light that's going through the eyepiece or through the camera. But this Newtonian is f4.65. Even with the two times Barlow, it's still brighter than most SCTs on the market. This is one of the most amazing things about Dobsonians is their sheer light gathering ability. I'm just waiting for Saturn to clear the roof of my house, then I'll get to photographing it. But in the meantime, I'm just having a look at the night sky. And so far we've seen some amazing sights. We've seen M27 dumbbell once again, M57, double cluster, and a blinking nebula. I can't remember the name of it, but it's in Cygnus. I'll put the NGC name up on the screen. So yeah, when you've got such a big Dobsonian, you don't have to worry about Barlow's, even visually. The ring nebula looks so big, so bright, and the colour is really quite obvious. This is amazing, and I'm absolutely loving this experience with this Dobsonian. With the Dobsonian, I managed to see some of the most amazing deep sky objects up close. I also managed to capture some basic photos with just my iPhone against the eyepiece. I also spent countless hours across those three nights capturing a photo of Saturn, my clearest photo yet. In the next video, we're going to be capturing two amazing deep sky objects with this telescope behind me. One of those is very familiar with most of you, but is very seldom captured up close. And as always, my name's Ben, you've been watching Bebo Rastro, and remember to keep looking up.